I'm so excited that Softer has just released their integration to SmartSuite because if you've been following our channel, you notice that we talk an awful lot about Softer and SmartSuite, and now you get the power of an awesome work management platform coupled with the power of a great front-end application builder. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we're no-code implementation partner. If you haven't gotten started with either Softer or SmartSuite, you can access both the affiliate links in our description below. So to get started, I'm using a solution template that I have from SmartSuite. I'm using their project management one, but you can do this with any templates, or if you have your own custom solutions that you've built, you can use those as well. The first thing we need to do in Softer is to click into our workspace settings. And from here, we can click on data sources and we can choose SmartSuite as our data source. And this will automatically connect us if we're already logged into our SmartSuite account. From here, we're going to click on add a new application and we'll just choose one from scratch. We'll create that application. And the first thing I like to do is to add our users and get those synced. So I'm gonna click on the users tab here. And this is where we're going to sync with that data source that we have. So we'll scroll down and we're gonna choose from the one that we created for SmartSuite. And then here we can choose our solution that we're pulling the users or the contacts from that are going to sync with Softer. Now we're choosing a table of contacts in our solution because we don't actually have to have a paid SmartSuite license for every single person who's accessing our Softer application. So we've got a special table that we have called guest access. And from here, we're gonna do some mapping of the user fields. Once we have our fields mapped, we're going to choose to generate a magic link, which is one of the coolest ways of authenticating your users and we'll save and sync those users. Now our sync's complete, but we'll wanna refresh that table so we can see what users that we have. And we can see that these four synced over if we're looking back inside of SmartSuite, we can see those users were part of that guest access table. So as we add them, we can get them synced into our users table here inside of Softer. Now in SmartSuite, we're using a single select here of group to identify what group they're involved. Are they a client, a consultant, an admin? And we can use this to govern who can see what and who can interact with what inside of our Softer application. Now we can manually assign users to user groups, which we can do so here but we can also create user groups and create some conditional logic with that. So in this case, I'm creating an admin group and we're going to be able to add users based on their conditions. So we'll say if that logged in user, and then we can find that attribute of group. And if the group is admin, then we're going to consider them part of this admin group and restrict or give them access to what they can do. Now in this use case, we're gonna talk about project management and how we can create an internal application for our team. We're not gonna get as much into the look and feel, but you have a lot of configuration options under the theme here, and you can configure your settings. For example, you could run this on your own custom subdomain or domain. For my pages, I'm gonna add a new page and we're gonna call this projects and we can configure the URL the way we want, but this works fine. So let's save this. And by default, we don't really have a lot on this. It starts blank and we can add to it. Now we can configure our menu up top and we can do that on our homepage, which we'll do in a bit. But for now, we're gonna start by adding a block and we can choose lots of different blocks to be able to add to our page that come configurable just out of the box here. I'm gonna choose list with vertical cards. And here's where we're going to start creating our projects that people can see. So we'll choose from our data source. Again, we'll choose the smart suite data source that we have. And now I'm gonna choose my projects. And this is now connected to our actual projects that we have, and we can see it start to update now, these images are still coming from the previous data source here. So this is where we can start to configure it and make it our own. I can click on the content tab here to start to configure that. So if I scroll down, here's where we can add different fields. And I can actually just tweak some of the ones that we have already. So here, let's look for a project image. And when we click that, we should start to see that update. And now we have our project images. We can click here for the heading and let's give this the name of the project. We'll add our total budget here. We'll see that reflected. And then let's check out the description. We can add the description for the project. So that'll make our card a little bit larger here. We've got these nice tags up top. I like the way that looks, but we want to add some context there. Let's choose to filter this by our stoplight status, essentially the health of the project. So you can see that we have those options over there just to make it easy to filter our projects if we have a lot in flight at the same time. So at this point, we could actually preview this experience. So right now we're inside a software studio, which is where we configure this. But at any point you can click and preview this as the different users that you have. So this is going to open up. 
and we can see what this looks like as a non-logged in user. That's what we're seeing first. And oh my goodness, we wouldn't actually want to share this with our non-logged in user. So we're going to have to change something there in a moment. What we do want to have is that our admins can see all the projects because we don't need the clients to focus on all the projects. They more want to focus on the tasks. So to do this, this is where those permissions come into play. So inside of Studio, I can click on this block and I can set those visibility settings to say only logged in users. And then we can get even more granular. Here's where I can say only the admin can actually see the projects here. So if we preview that again, or if we head back here and we refresh what we're seeing now as a non-logged in user, we don't see anything else aside from that menu. And maybe we'd want to render some kind of message so we could say, hey, projects aren't available, or maybe we don't show them the page at all, that we don't link to that page in our navigation. But if we are an admin and we click on it, then we are going to be able to see all of the projects. So when that reloads and we're now impersonating me as an admin, here's where my projects are able to display. Let's add another page for tasks. This is what our clients are concerned with. They want to create tasks for us. So we'll create that new tasks page. And now let's go ahead and add a block here. And this time we'll do list with horizontal cards. We'll connect to our data source again. We'll choose our tasks. And now we can go to our content and we can start changing this to make it make a little bit more sense for the data that we have. Okay, this might look a little bit simple, but at least it has the data that we want and you can add more fields later on. So I've got a due date, a description, and a status for each of these. But as you can imagine, it wouldn't really make sense unless we're an admin to see all of the tasks. We do want our client to see the tasks they've created for us, but we don't want them to see all of the tasks from our other clients. So this is where it's going to be helpful to be able to show the information conditionally. If this is a task that they created, then we want to show that task. Now, one of the easiest ways to do this back in SmartSuite is that we have this email address field for our guest access. And on our tasks, We've got that linked record to the client here, as you can see, which links to that guest access table. So we have that. And then what I've done is I've added a lookup field. So we can see that this email here, if I go to modify field settings, is a lookup. So this is actually pulling from that guest access and showing their email address. Now, this is important because we want to compare the two. We want to say, hey, if Greg Guest is assigned on this task, if here's his email address and the logged in user is Greg Guest, then we want to show those relevant tasks. So we can do this in Softer back on the source side. We can scroll down and we can add a condition to say if the email then is, and here's where we can choose and drop down and click on the logged in user's email, then it's going to display the relevant ones to them. Now it's important to note that this isn't necessarily going to do the filtering when you're in Software Studio. You want to do the actual preview mode for this. So let's go ahead and run that preview again. And now you can see, hey, as I'm logged in as Dan, I can see the tasks that are assigned to me. If I am logged in as Greg, and we have this reload, now we can see the tasks that are available to him. One of the cool things I can do is I can even create a project details page where I have some information about the project and then I can see the tasks down below. And when we create that details page, if we go back into our projects, our list of projects, what we can do is we can add actions. And that's one of the really powerful features about Softer. So if when we click on this, we want to actually be taken to that projects page, what we can do is we can click here, we can go to actions, and then we can say, hey, what happens when we click on this object? Well, we wanna open up the details page and then we open that project details. So when we preview this, now we have our list of projects and we can click on that project, which then will take us into our project details page. One of the last things we'll wanna do is to add this to our menu, to our navigation area. And so if we click on pages, and we go back to our home, here's where we can modify this. And because this is for logged in users, we'll click on this one and we'll scroll down to projects and then projects, we will open up our projects page and we can either open that in a new tab or not. We can publish this and we're good to go. This is just a small glimpse into the functionality that Softer has to offer. We've got a huge playlist on our channel if you wanna check out other videos on how to use Softer and you can get started for free using the link in the description below.